Now I'm going to start working on the next phase of the um, FM50 installation on my South Bend lathe. What I've done today is I've actually put in the two eight conductor wire uh, for hooking up the remote controls as you can see there. I've actually got in and I've already gone ahead and run the wires through the system and down through my base um, and across through my seal tight and up through and into my control box here. This is going to be my remote panel. This is an emergency stop on the top. I've got the forward and reverse knob there on top of that. And then down on the next one, I'm going to have the potentiometer, which I'll show you that in just a few minutes. I've chosen to mount this panel on to the uh, factory mount. I've seen some folks so I'll actually put a, take like a collet rack uh, stand and mount that onto the ways uh, down here and actually bring it up over the back or take one of the old uh, metal pole uh, remote control uh, knobs and mount all of it to that. You can do it either way you want to. I just chose to do it this way because it makes it real easy and accessible. And what I did with my remote is I actually mounted it in the spot where the old mount was at. Just drilled a few extra holes in the bottom of the box, this four control box here, and was able to actually um, wire everything up through there and bolt it on where the old one was. No problem, didn't have to make any modifications to the lathe itself. Could have done a few other things, but decided that this angle was good and everything worked like I wanted it to. But here's the inside of my case. Uh, as you can see, the wires are coming through. Uh, that's a three quarter inch uh, seal tight connection. And I've got those coming through. And uh, again, each one of those wires is shielded and there is a grounding post inside. Uh, I'm going to actually ground everything inside this case as well. And then also the lid has a grounding terminal as well. Okay, here is the panel. I've got a block off here on this particular uh, opening. Eventually I'll cut this out and this will fit where I'll put the tachometer. It is actually square, so I will have to do some modification to get it in there like I want it. Um, it is just a little digital uh, tachometer, but I'll, we'll get to that. But uh, this is an FM6, I believe, potentiometer here that control, that'll control the speed of the system. Uh, I had to put a 22 to 30 millimeter adapter plate on this particular unit because the only one they had that was in was a 20 two millimeter and this is a 30 millimeter panel. I've since found out that we can get this metal case in 22 millimeter. Uh, and that will actually facilitate using the other buttons that I've purchased actually. So, um, but for now I, I can just use these uh, 22 millimeter to 30 millimeter adapters. And uh, it has a little collar, a little shoulder that goes on there. It's actually really nice. It makes it look real neat. Uh, difference is that uh, the little sticker that get, comes with the potentiometer that runs zero through nine is actually the same size as this collar. So I can't stick it on there. I don't want to stick it on there right now. I may stick it on there later, but uh, it's actually the same size. So it won't actually stick it. I can tell just by the way it fits it, it would come off eventually. So I may figure out me some way to make me a little dial that'll go in here for speed variation. So, but what I've got, so basically from an operator's position, uh, which is basically here, uh, I have full access to the panel. I got emergency stop if I need it, uh, twist release. I've got the uh, reverse and forward as well as the speed control all positioned in a spot that's away from the actual uh, chuck. So it's a safety, another safety piece. It's kind of puts you back, lets you step back, but also being straight in front of the control panel be very easy to turn everything off and on. And uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up the, I'm going to pull the shield back on these wires and start wiring them into these buttons. I want to go into a little bit more detail here now that I've got the actual wiring completed for the remote panel uh, minus the tachometer. Uh, as you'll see inside the FM50 control panel, I've got the different wires. I've got two uh, seven strand wires in there 
plus a ground and a shield. So as you can see on this particular setup, I've got the grounding wire and the shielding wire both terminated on the ground post and that's all tied into my ground. I also use that uh, grounding post to ground out the lathe itself. And you can see uh, on the front of the FM50, get it lined up, you can see all the different settings uh, within the book. You've got forward, reverse, 12 volt, the special programming, and then you've got the 10 volts, uh, the 1 volt, or VI actually in 0 volts, and that's for the uh, potentiometer. And all that's uh, covered actually in the book. The book, what I'm doing with the book is I'm actually going to record in the, I got the manual, I keep it inside the control box. I'm going to record all the settings for the VFD in there. So in the future, if I ever have a problem or anything, I'll always have what I need. I've covered the wiring of the VFD as far as power and everything to the machine in another video. But basically, the secondary wire that's in there, the one that's in the back there you see going up, it's just tucked away. It's, it's not terminated at all. So I've got extra wire there in case I need it for whatever reason. I was able to actually use uh, seven conductors within this system because three of the feeds that uh, come over to this unit are 12 volts and I was able to actually jump those off of each other. It's just the wires that come through. They come out through. I put uh, the, they come through and I actually taped up the end with the shielding cable and everything that comes out. So that wire is shielded um, up through that point. Anyway, this grounding wire goes over and terminates on the grounding post in the corner. I still need to do that step. So I've got to put that in there. That's where it'll be grounded. Then I've got the um, actual connectors that come in. I've got the potentiometer wired. I've got three wires that come into it. And then I've got, uh, you'll see a wire that comes into this terminal. That's a 12 volt lead. And this is a two position switch here. And the, the 12 volt jumps over and comes to this side of this lead. Then it jumps over up to the top to the emergency stop. And what that does is the way that's wired in, it allows the 12 volt signal to control the forward, the reverse, and emergency stop all off the same voltage feed. So then I have single wires that go back. One goes back for the forward, which is the top connector on this feed right here on the right. Then on the left, this top connector goes back and goes around back to the VFD. And then on this one, the top wire, I've done everything. I've kept it so that all the signal wires are the top connector and all the voltage wires are the bottom connector just to keep it separated. These wires are all the same color, uh, but that's just the way the wire's made. But if you can look, you can see that each one of these wires is numbered. So these are actually uh, CNC rated wiring. So they're braided core, they're really nice conductor wires, they're just numbered instead of color coded. And that's pretty much it for that, I mean it's a very simple setup.